www.88beats.com Beats Graphics Graphics Studio Design Studio Design We do it all, baby. What's going on, everybody? My name's Thomas, aka Bones. Um, owner of 88beats.com, soundclicklayouts.com, uh, also known as QC Designs. Anyways, I want to share a couple couple points about selling beats now um, I see a lot of I see a lot of producers let's see there's, there's a lot of people there's a uh, gja.com I'm pretty sure everybody's familiar with gja with Mike Mike Leitner uh, there's I forget the other guy's name um, not blitz beats he's partnered with with the other guy uh, HB I, I forget his real name but uh, he goes by HB. Uh, well, this guy has great, great tips about selling beats, how people can can make more money selling beats. Now, all these guys, they talk about selling beats. They talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. They show you proof that you know they're selling beats. But what they don't tell you is how can you sell beats safely? Because most of the people that sell beats are using PayPal. Now they're using they're using services like my Flash Store. Um, yeah, myflashstore.net. They're using BeatStars, uh, a few other ones I can't really remember. Uh, there's there's so many of them, but you see the the problem is that they're all using PayPal. Now, what's the problem with PayPal and why I am focusing on the payment more than just how to sell the beats? A lot of people know how to sell the beats. Okay, you get a website, do some SEO work, do some Facebook promotion. Everybody's a rapper, man. Everybody raps. Everybody sings. It's an endless, an endless genre, hip hop. Endless genre. I mean, you have so many people that are willing to invest, you know, ten to twenty dollars per per lease track, and they'll use it however they want, and they think they're gonna get famous. Cool. <coughs> Excuse me. But what people don't know is that when you when you sell beats online, and you're using PayPal you're not protected okay so PayPal protects okay look this is PayPal, PayPal's protection they will protect sellers if they sell over $250 and have the items signed and that's for shipping okay you're not protected with PayPal seller if if you don't go with those guidelines okay so say you sell something and it's a digital download okay you kinda are protected but they don't say they protect you they don't protect the seller or the buyer if it's intangible items. The tangible goods they do at 250 and more, like I just said. So, say someone has a credit card tied to their PayPal account. They don't actually load the funds into the PayPal, they use their credit card as their payment through their PayPal. Make sense? Pretty sure everybody's done that before. Okay, so say this person wants to buy an exclusive, an exclusive track from you. They want to pay you top dollar, okay? They send you the they send you the money using their credit card, and they have. I mean, I've seen chargebacks come up as far as, geez, three months, almost four months. They can go to their credit card company, say they never. They can just simply just open up a dispute via their credit card company. They don't have to go through PayPal. So if they if they have credit uh, Capital One credit card, they can just go to Capital One and say. Hey, this purchase, it wasn't me. I never approved it. I have no idea what that is. I never had any, anything shipped to me. At that moment, if Capital One, <coughs> if Capital One does not confirm that they signed and their signatures don't match with other documents and other other documents, but other other things that they paid for, if their signatures aren't the same, they'll immediately reimburse that client. What will then happen is they'll send it to PayPal. And PayPal will take it right out of your right out of your account. They're not going to ask. They're not going to say, "Hey, can you provide proof?" Like they would when they open up a dispute. This is different. They're going to go straight to the credit card company. Credit card's going to already take it out. PayPal's going to take it out of your account, and they charge you a fee. There's a, I believe, twenty-five or like thirty thirty dollar fee, something stupid, on top of your your sale that you already made. Okay. Now, why I, I point this out to people is because it happens, okay? When you start selling on PayPal, 
are when you start selling beats on your website and you're using PayPal as a payment, you're gonna get scammed. It's it happens to everybody. I don't know one person that makes a living off the internet using PayPal that hasn't gotten scammed. They all get scammed. So the best thing you can do is prepare for it. Get your get your uh, you know get your documents together. <clears throat> if you sell beats, get your get your ownership rights together. Don't just send people tracks without anything behind it, no documents or nothing. You're gonna have to have documents. You're gonna have to have, you know, if you have to put the fine print, whatever you have to do. Their rights are only good as long as that money's good. If, say, if they pay, and you send them the rights, in your rights include include that information. I don't know how you would include it. The way I include it is I put it in every single one of my contracts. You're entitled to lifetime rights as long as the funds are cleared. So if the funds aren't cleared and they are not transferred, then you don't own the rights. Your, your rights are then handed back to us, granted that we've given you back the money. So it's that simple. That's what I put in all my contracts. That way, if that dispute comes up and I see it on the credit card and it says, you know, sorry, but this person has no idea what they bought, their credit card was stolen. They reported it as a stolen credit card. Someone bought your, your digital download and there's no proof of where it went. So yeah, you're screwed in other words. And they're gonna take the money right out of your account. Okay, I've had chargebacks up to I've had charge bags really high. And the most common ones around two hundred to three hundred dollars. Um, I haven't really seen too many over three hundred dollars. Actually, I'd say that most the most common. I'd say about seventy percent of the charge bags are from th from twenty dollars to fifty dollars. Hundred dollars to three hundreds. You know, the other twenty five percent of the charge bags. Um, reason being is simply if someone's going to spend twenty dollars and they get it back, imagine how many producers they're doing it to. They probably got albums albums worth of beats that they've purchased and then gotten back from their credit card companies. So they never really have to pay for any of the beats, which is, you might think of it like, oh, that's a good idea. If you do, then you're a scammer, you suck, fuck you. So otherwise, I mean, work honestly, you know, sell honestly. Don't lie to people. When you sell them a beat, don't say they're going to get something that they're not. Don't give them something that they didn't pay for. It's that simple. If you have long-term clients, yeah, give them free beats because you trust them. But new new people that come up to your site and they buy a beat, someone says they want to send you $300, you make an invoice in PayPal, you get it and then two months later all of a sudden that's reversed. Reverse the damn rights. You put it in your contract that it says as long as our funds are in our bank, in our pockets, then your rights belong to you. It's sort of like, uh, what I call it is the grace period. I put on my contracts, it's a grace period I explain that, I explain simply that the rights are only good if the money's good. So if the money's no good and they're not, you know, if, if they, well, they know if they're issuing a chargeback, they know. They're, they're doing it to hundreds of people, you're not the first they're doing it to. They know and they know it's a little flaw in the PayPal system, that they can just simply do it. PayPal can't fight it because you have no proof that they signed it, they don't care. They don't care at all. And it'll, like I said, three months will go by and you'll see a negative 300 in your PayPal and be like, man, that was three months ago. You know, like, how can they, how can they reverse it? Shit, I don't know. But it happens. So protect yourself. The only way you're gonna protect yourself is you put it in the rights, because that way the person can't sue you by saying, I am entitled to lifetime rights. They, you can look in the fine print and say, no, I have proof that that chargeback was reversed and you were refunded the money, which grants me full ownership rights. I can continue to sell the beat now. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna go resell the beat. Just go put it up. Since you lost money on it, go lease the hell out of it. Try to just lease it and get some money back for it. You know, the main reason why I lease beats is if, you know, it kind of gives me that, kind of gives me that cushion, you know what I mean? like. It brings in revenue, so I'll purposely make beats just to lease them. I won't sell them exclusively. If I make a beat and I want some money for it, and I want a serious buyer, someone who's gonna really take that beat and try to do something good with it, I'll charge upwards three hundred dollars, you know, and they're gonna pay for it if they're serious about it. And if they're not, then they can buy the twenty dollar tracks, and that's just gonna buy me food through the day, you know, stuff like that. You know, uh, 
you can make serious money off leases, but I mean, just think, it's all numbers game. The more people that are buying your product, no matter what you're selling, the more people that are buying your product, the more prone you are to getting scammed. And it's gonna happen, it happens to everybody, like I'm saying online, that sell online. I sell, I sell graphics, I sell beats, um, getting ready to launch some merchandise and, and do a full clothing store or whatnot. Um, if you don't know, I build custom vocal booths. I do sound acoustics for recording studios. Um, I design studios, mix and master. I'm, uh, you know, I'm a decent engineer. So all of those things bring me bring me income. What I have seen the most commonly charged back is from graphic design, and it's from a lot of producers that see these guys videos they see all the how to sell beats and they're they're so sold on it so they buy the course a lot of the courses refer me as a designer which is great thank you guys for doing that um, I never asked anybody to do that I don't ask anybody to do anything like that um, yeah they refer me and people buy 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 a design from me and a month goes by and they don't sell a beat. They don't sell one beat. They don't even lease a beat. They're not even getting more than 200 plays on their song in a week. So they're mad because they're not selling beats. So what they do is they open up a dispute with whoever they bought the ebook from. They try to get the money back from my designs, all that kind of stuff. Now, since they're angry they didn't sell beats, I get it because they were led into the, into the scams that they read online and thought that they could sell beats. Don't, if you're that person, think about why you're not selling. Don't think of the other people that sold you to their product. If, if you're not selling beats, don't get mad at anybody but yourself. You need to understand that you're missing something if you're not selling beats, okay? Anyways, I'm going to close this, close this video. My camera's acting up. Um, I don't even know if this damn thing's in focus. It looks out of focus, but whatever. Um... Yeah, man, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to upload some more videos. I'm going to be talking about how people can avoid, avoid these chargebacks. I mean, I've been, I've been doing this over three years, and I've figured out ways that I can avoid the chargebacks. I wish I could have a setting on PayPal to where nobody can use credit cards. That would, that would be the simplest way to avoid any scams. Credit cards are the main scam artist here. They don't care about your proof. I've even gotten scammed out of things I've given people that they've signed for. I've seen people on eBay get scammed left and right. It happens all the time. And the credit card companies are relentless. They do not care. The money circulates. If they get it back, they're gonna, the clients are going to spend it. Then they're going to pay interest. They don't care. That's all they're in the business for. So think of ways that you can protect yourself at least. If, if you can't stop the scamming, at least figure out an alternative that if you get scammed, no big deal. You can make your money back. That's exactly what I do. If I get scammed out of something, you know, if something doesn't go my way and I sell a big website package and all of a sudden the dude says that the item was not as described or something, you know, it's a freaking website. You're the one that sent me the emails on what to do. Those people will try to scam me. I have ways that I protect myself. At the end of the day, if they use their credit card company and they end up getting their money back after I fight it, then no big deal. I host all my images. What I simply do is I remove, they can't use my, once they cancel payment, they can't use my designs. I have all the images hosted online on my cloud. Take them all down. All they are left with is codes. At that point, I mean, unless they save their background images and recode it, more power to them. But at that point, I'm selling the design now. I'm going to put it up and I'm going to sell it for $30 and sell it to 100 people. Now I'm going to make twice my money. Okay, so I don't do that. I don't do that unless someone gets their money back and scams me because then at that point the design's not custom anymore it was already made for someone that scammed me so I'm not gonna I don't sell a custom design twice I don't make an exclusive track twice so producers great thing to think about separating separating your ownership rights rather than just allowing everybody to lease any track and then buy it as an exclusive if you're gonna buy it as an exclusive don't promote it as exclusive as you know thousands of people might have the beat promote it more of like, you know, you know, solo ownership rights, full unlimited ownership rights, you know, purchase a lease 
for this beat and you're kind of leasing it, whatever, you got 2,000 units to sell, whatever, and then set your exclusives, wipe that price, that wipe that title off for the price being high to say solo ownership, you get to use the beat, unlimited amounts of copies, it's yours, we don't resell it. Done. So think about that, producers. Put that in your fine print in your contracts. You'll thank me for doing it, um, at least because it'll save you in court. The only thing that holds up in court is paper. So know the, know the court system, know how the law works. Put stuff in paper. Send it to the client right when they buy that track. Zip it in a folder. Save it on your system, on backup drives. Save it everywhere for your records for up to months, years. I save every sale I make, years. I save them all. Everything's documented. I don't print anything. Everything's done electronically, of course. I have hard drives that I transfer backup, backup, backup. I back up all my backups twice. So that way I'm safe. I don't lose anything. If someone were to try to sue me here, you know, and lived in the same state or whatever, and they took me to court, I'd have plenty of proof, okay? And say right in the fine print, I'd show them the transaction date, the transaction number, say, this is when he paid for the tracks. He would agree. He got his tracks, his email. I would say, okay, I refunded the money this date. In the contracts, it states that if the money is refunded or reversed, then the ownership rights are then reversed and given back to the, so the, the original owner, which is me. So... From there, I can sell the tracks legally. They're legally mine, so I'm not doing anything illegal at that point. You guys need to do the same. You need to think about it. Think of ways that you can protect yourself. Sorry for the long video. Those who watched the whole thing, I hope you I hope you understand what I'm talking about. If you don't, come back to this video after you get scammed. Then you'll start to see that you need to start protecting yourself and taking precautions. So. Cool. Stay tuned for the next video. Subscribe. I'm, I'll be uploading beats. I'll do a whole bunch of mi like mixing, mastering videos. You know, I'll be doing a whole bunch of tips to help you guys sell stuff. And I'm honest. I'm not going to sit here and boast and brag about anything. I'm just going to simply let you know what I do that helps me sell stuff. How do I make money? Uh, stuff like that. So stay tuned, man.